So my name is Rachel Hughes. I, I went to VCU. Um, I got into Whitewater through their outdoor adventure program. Having outlets uh, for accessibility is like super important just because this whole, I mean, not the whole city, but a big portion of the city and their community is like based off of the river. It is really easy to gatekeep that uh, with just like lack of gear, lack of knowledge. Um, and we do want people to be safe on the river. You know, people don't always have that um, knowledge about river safety. So being able to like expand that as well is super important. I started as a raft guide on the Akoli River and I didn't know anything about it, but they hired me and so I went out there and started guiding. It's a lot of testosterone for sure. The environment is like a bit intense. It's almost like comically exaggerated and um, people can be really intense about like who's the best guide, who's been around the longest. It's like a very strict hierarchy. It's most things like who gets the most trips and stuff like that goes by seniority. I wanted to kayak like as soon as I started guiding but I was like way too scared. So I had a friend who had an inflatable kayak and I started borrowing theirs and taking it on like half laps on the Akoe. And then I bought my own inflatable kayak which was super expensive but it was a good investment because it like got me on the river so I wasn't like worrying about borrowing people's gear and I could go whenever. So I started out going with like James River Women, which is a women's paddling group in Richmond. And then I finally got my own hard boat uh, just a few weeks ago. So my name is Steven Legay, and I got into Whitewater after my stepdad gave me a boat and paddle and taught me how to roll. He has been a very big role in my Whitewater enthusiasm, and now I have access to the James River down in Richmond. It's, it's a great, it's a great community. River karma is definitely real. If you put good vibes into the river, I do think it comes back to you. I got my boat because someone that I work with just gave it to me to learn on. They said that the same thing happened to them. Like, Someone gave it to them to learn on it because it's like a, a river runner. It's more stable. It's a pretty forgiving boat to learn with. So they gave it to me for free and now I'm riding that out and I feel obligated to pass it on to keep the good karma going. I think like the idea of river karma definitely helps build community because it reminds you to like look out for other people because they're going to be the ones looking out for you. Yeah, if somebody wanted to get into Whitewater, I would say just put yourself out there and ask. Um, this community, especially in Richmond, is really friendly uh, and they want they want to get other people into Whitewater. Um, James River Women um, is a really great resource to use, especially for um, women trying to access the outdoors. My name is Berkeley, and I got into Whitewater because my dad was a kayaker when I was younger. Um, I'm Jen and I got into kayaking because Berkeley uh, forced me to get on the river, <laughs> river with her all the time. I feel like it's an important thing for everybody to have equal access to whitewater. Um, there's so often like people getting into it because it's like a legacy thing. You have to come from like an affluent kind of, you know, well-off family. You have to know somebody um, and then mostly it's just kind of like uh, male dominated. The importance here being uh, like what we're doing with James River Women is just to get other people out in this sport. Yeah, so James River Women has been around for a pretty long time, I think since 2013. Um, but recently we've kind of taken the reins. Um, what we hope to do is kind of decrease some of the barriers in learning how to whitewater kayak or do other whitewater sports. Um, we do that by having these weekly kind of half guided trips where we like bring people down and we make sure there's people there to watch out for them. Um, we do give like some kind of basic level instruction that's all completely free. Um, and we also were gifted a grant this year from the Department of Wildlife Resources, which allowed us to buy boats, paddles, helmets, PFDs, like everything that we need um, so that people can try it out without the barrier of entry that cost creates. Um, whitewater gear is really expensive, so we're able to kind of eliminate that barrier for people to give it a try, at least at first.
Um, safety with whitewater requires a couple of different things. One is knowledge, and you don't really get that knowledge just like out in the wild pretty regularly. You kind of have to have people teach you the ropes. Um, another part of safety in whitewater is numbers. Uh, the recommended minimum amount of people you have on the water is three and ideally at least one of those people should be like pretty experienced um, and when you're first starting out it's hard to break into a community like that and like find people who are experienced that can take you down to have those numbers. So safety is really important and, and there are barriers to doing it safely. Even when like introducing people to white water or helping people out can feel like irritating and tedious because like there's some things that you just have to learn on your own it's like good to remember that looking out for people will come back to you